So it's, uh, it's Angus here from IC Markets. Thanks to everyone for attending tonight. Uh, room's almost full. Um, so like the last webinar we did on um, interest rate trading and scalping, um, it's a pretty popular uh, topic um, of discussion. Um, and that's why I've chosen to do it again uh, for everyone. Uh, probably more so than last time, I'm really going to open up the room to uh, question time. Um, what I'm sharing with you tonight is just my idea of what scalping and intraday trading is. It's going to be uh, very different to what some people would perceive um, as uh, short-term trading and scalping. Um, so it's, um, yeah, it's a really good opportunity for you to ask questions and uh, perhaps I can provide some clarification um, you know, on what I do and what I deem to be successful in the market. Before we go any further tonight, there's a disclaimer on the screen. If you do, just have a quick look at it. Um, essentially, trading FX or any derivative is risky business. Um, if you are going to do so, it is recommended you seek independent financial advice before doing so. And you can get a PDS product disclosure statement from our website. So an overview of what we'll be discussing tonight. So I'll show you our Vimeo page quickly. Um, tell you a little bit about the, the euro dollar. Um, candlestick analysis, just very brief. Um, we do have other webinars which uh, cover candlesticks and there's plenty of material online to help you understand them better. Um, so I'm not going to go too much into them, just a brief overview. Um, some price patterns, again, I'm, I'm just going to rush through that just because I think there's a lot of information that can explain them better than I can in one hour. Uh, indicator heaven, um, you'll see what that is in a second. News order flow, which is just referring to um, just news feeds and um, digesting order flow information um, in order to make decisions. Um, using news and order flow to identify market sentiment and using that to influence our trading decisions. And then probably what I'd like to spend most of tonight doing is um, just going through uh, the euro, um, just some charts, probably about the last week of uh, price action and opening up the room to uh, questions. You can't um, speak. I'm the only one who can speak at the moment. Um, if we have everyone on microphone, it gets a bit echoey and uh, a little bit confusing. So you can type in questions in the, uh, in the question box. I'll be able to see them. Um, if I can, I'll answer it um, as I'm going through the presentation. Otherwise, we'll just uh, go through the questions at the end. Uh, it might be best if, while I'm going through everything, you write down questions on a piece of paper, and that way I can, um, or that way it'll be fresh in your mind. Um, you know, you can remember to ask me, and, and I can go through it in uh, a lot more detail towards the towards the end when I open it up to questions. So, our Vimeo page. This is where you can find previous webinar recordings uh, that we've done. Okay, so last week we did one uh, which was called "Eliminating the Confusion Factor." I'd really recommend that. Um, you have a look at that if you haven't already or if you weren't there last week. Um, Michael Brook uh, from Trading State, he uh, did go into market manipulation and some price patterns that he looks for. Uh, me and Michael get along really well because we both look for the same patterns in the market um, and that's why I'm always happy to have him speak with us. I'll be talking, I'll be, I look for similar patterns and so you'll hear me talk about them tonight. But um, if you do want more I guess clarification on them, perhaps it's a good idea to review that one from last week. Another one, the structure of the Forex market, I do go into a lot more detail in it discussing um, how brokers work, how the interbank market works, how orders work, so uh, that can really um, assist you if you want to be a short-term trader as well. And then the last webinar we did on uh, scalping, um, that's online as well, um, and I do go into a bit more detail on some of the you know candlesticks and uh, price patterns in it. So uh, the euro dollar, uh, personally with me, the euro dollar, uh, which just to clarify stands for, you know, it, you might as uh, you might know it as uh, EUR USD, so the euro USD. Uh, but yeah, it's a real love hate relationship that I've had with it for on and off five years now. Um, I did what most traders would do, and I chop and change between, you know, every currency that's in the platform. And then I just decided um, after a workshop, actually, when one of the um, traders there, he said that he only trades euro dollar, and I said, well, if it's good enough for a professional, it's good enough for me. Uh, most people I speak to on a daily basis, they trade the euro. Um, if not exclusively, 
it's definitely one of the favourites. Um, sitting where I sit and seeing the trade volumes come through daily, it's definitely the most traded currency um, on our platform as well. Um, so yeah, it's uh, definitely most popular. I'd attribute a lot of my uh, adolescent hair loss to the euro dollar as well. It's um, it's definitely something that um, you know can give you a headache. It's definitely the most volatile currency out there. It's got a really big daily range, which means that for intraday traders uh, like myself and many of the people in the room, it provides the most opportunity. Um, the euro, uh, and this kind of touches on uh, what Michael spoke about last week with regards to market manipulation. It's um, it's a real game within a game, so you kind of you're always second guessing your decision um, making, and um, you're always thinking about what are other people doing, and that's the way that I try to trade. It's kind of like a game of chess, um, so you're always thinking about what the opponent's doing. Um, in this case, you know you could call it the market. You could call it um, a hedge fund, whatever you you know you know wanted to describe it as, but um, it's a game within a game, and and it takes a long time to kind of figure it out and figure out where you fit in that game. You know, if you're a trend trader, if you're a short-term trader, um, you know, revert to the mean and so on. Um, the game within a game also relates to uh, searching for liquidity and stops. So, uh, big players in the market, people that are you know moving large sums of money, these. People are looking for places where they can, um, uh, or basically where there's sufficient liquidity to, to fill the size of their orders. So um, when a large player is moving into the market, if they just start buying, um, sure enough, the euro is going to rally or it's going to move higher. Um, and this means that their system is left less profitable. So if they can buy when other people are selling, then it makes them incur less slippage or zero slippage. Okay, so these people are searching for liquidity. Um, and those are often areas where there's lots of stops. We'll touch on that a bit later when we go through the live analysis. Uh, my idea of scalping, and this isn't um, you know, probably in sync with a lot of people out there, but um, maximum risk per trade would be 1% um, and maximum stop distance would be 10 pips per trade. Um, ideally, when I, when I trade intraday and if, if I'm scalping, 10 pips is my absolute uh, maximum risk. My average loss, I was looking at my stats earlier, is my average loss works out to be around four and a bit pips, and my average gain would be close to 10, so it's a bit over nine. And that means that my, my average win is twice my average loss, which is, I guess, ideal for this kind of trading, because it means I only have to get half my trades right in order to you know, make money. Actually, less than that. But um, I'd never ever, or I very, very rarely take a 10 pip loss on a trade, and I try to close out um, trades as soon as possible if I think it's going to go the other direction. Um, scalping is something that's really only available through uh, an ECM broker or a DMA broker. Um, if you do try it with a market maker broker, you know, you're just going to have problems. At the start of this year, I actually um, I opened up a, a brokerage account with several other brokers in Australia and one in New Zealand uh, just to test the execution facilities. Um, and just try to learn from what you know how they operated as well, and um, you know the results weren't all that positive. And although it started off um, you know really good, you know tight spreads, etc. Um, after a while, you find that the execution begins to slow down, um, and that's when you start you know having problems because when you're scalping, you're in a trade for you know anything from I've been in trades for you know under 15 seconds to a couple of minutes to sometimes half an hour. But um, basically, if a broker sees that you're in trades for less than a, a minute, then you know they're going to lose money on the trade. They're not going to have the ability to hedge it, and um, you know you're going to be a risk to their book. So only through an ECN or a direct market access broker, um, not through a market maker broker. How do you know the difference between the two? DMA or ECM brokers generally we we only charge commission. I see markets for an uh, ECM broker we charge commission. Um, you know, if your broker is just giving you a spread to trade off, um, that's usually a pretty good indication. Um, so, candlestick analysis. Um, candlestick analysis. If you're scalping, it's probably going to be the best um, chart to use, as opposed to a line or a bar chart. Um, the reason for that, it's uh, visually it's a lot easier on the eyes uh, to see areas of exhaustion. Um, you know, we use a lot of uh, pin bars. Um, they're far easier to see on a candlestick chart than they are on a bar chart. Um, so we're using candlesticks mainly. Um, 
and all we're looking for is failure and conviction uh, candles. So failure, failure candles are anything that say a pin bar, and um, I'll show you examples of them later. Pin bars, in my opinion, is anything with an extended wick. Okay. Um, on the con you know, or basically on the opposite is the uh, conviction candle, and the conviction candle is anything that has a full body. Okay. So it has very um, little uh, wick, right? So very little wicks at either end, and generally a conviction candle will either engulf an existing candle or the range um, on the body will be you know between probably yeah between one and a half to two three or more times the size of the existing candle okay so it generally encompasses many of the existing candles before it and this basically tells us that um, a trend change is imminent especially on the high time frame so conviction candles on the on the sorry on the small time frame so the conviction candles um, especially um, to pick a breakout, are extremely effective. Okay, um, so a failure candle, we're looking for a new high or low to be established on the chart. There are certain conditions which can make these uh, more powerful. So if a new high or low is established um, and it takes, out an, or it takes out a previous low or high, um, it makes it a lot more powerful. And the previous low or high can be um, days before, um, hours before, but generally the, the long period of time between um, the, you know, the, the last high uh, or low, the more powerful the area becomes when it pierces it and then fails at it. Okay, the reason for that is because we want to trade where, um, what I was talking about before, the search for liquidity. So all traders put their stops beyond highs or above highs and below lows. Okay, so a stop loss basically means you know it's a it's a market order to execute when that level is reached. So if you want to buy the euro, okay, you want to put a buy order in, um, you know, when everyone else is selling. So if a low is breached, and um, I'll definitely show you on this, this on the chart, but if a low is breached, it means that stop losses are going to get triggered, okay, and there's going to be a, you know a whole flurry of you know sell stop orders hitting the market. Okay, which is great. When that happens, that's the ample opportunity for you know a large trader to move into the market because they're going to move into the market. They're going to have minimal market impact because all the sell stops are going to you know, or their their buy order is going to absorb all the um, the sell stops that are hitting the market. Okay, so when everyone else is selling, they're getting closed out of the positions. Um, you know, big traders would be moving in and absorbing all that you know um, order flow. Um, you know, in the anticipation that's going to move higher. You know, so that's why a lower or high that takes out a previous lower high is more powerful um, for this kind of trading. Um, any area that we have an extended wick um, or a price retracement, whatever the price retracement is greater than uh, fifty percent of the candle. So if fifty percent of the candle is exposed or there's fifty percent wick, then you know that would um, kind of imply a failure candle. Um, no, I'm, I'm not showing any photos of charts just yet, Peter. I'm going to go through them in a minute. But if you write down questions, I can clarify any of these points on the chart um, if, you're, if you're not getting something. Um, an ACM broker, uh, let's cover that question at the end. Um, so <clears throat> again, just on conviction candles, um, yeah, so it's engulfing and therefore it's encompassing one or more of the previous candles. And its body should be at least, you know, one to two times that of the existing candles. Okay, so a conviction bar, and this is why price action and candlestick analysis is so much more effective than indicators. An indicator um, is always going to be extremely lagging, right? So if you have an indicator like average true range, so it's going to give you the average range over the last couple of bars, um, however many you, you know, tell it to. And with that, you know, with a breakout, you'll have one conviction candle telling you to get into the trade. No indicator can tell you that that, you know, conviction bar is, you know, three times the range of the last, you know, bars, for example. Um, you can get an automated trading system or an expert advisor to do that, but, you know, no indicator out of the box in MT4 can actually tell you that. So that's why with scalping, 
um, which is extremely short term and extremely fast, um, you know, we don't use a lot of indicators because indicators are going to give us a lagging signal and you know, we're going to be one step behind the action. Okay, so price patterns. Price patterns uh, are to be used in conjunction with candlestick analysis and we identify price patterns on the charts and then we use candlestick analysis to, um, to I guess, give us more, to give us better entries on these patterns. Okay, so if we can um, anticipate patterns as they are forming, then we can get better entries and exits on trades. Uh, better entries and exits on trades essentially means that we can use a tighter stop loss. Okay, so tighter stop loss means that we can have better risk to reward. It means that we can make more mistakes um, on our trades and just get one right. It'll make up, you know, for a whole heap of them. Okay, so. We use price patterns to give us context um, as to where the market uh, currently is. Okay, and then we use candlestick analysis to you know define entries within the price patterns. Um, I've already marked out a few levels on some of the charts uh, that we're going to look at soon. Um, probably the most uh, or one of the most important patterns I find, and that. I thought was really valuable when I first um, started to use price patterns in my analysis is the head and shoulders pattern. Head and shoulders pattern is the it's probably like one of the oldest patterns um, around, it, uh, especially um, you know for technical analysis. It's just um, you know it was one of the very, one of the very earliest, um, and it, it's been such a powerful indicator of uh, reversals. But I think it's often overlooked in people's analysis because it's such a well. It's kind of like a, um, a stereotypical pattern, but on the smaller time frames, um, what, and I'm talking about the one-minute time frame, on a five-minute time frame, it might look like consolidation with a few, um, you know, extended wicks. So on an hourly time frame, it might look the exact same. But when we zoom in on price action onto, you know, a one-minute chart, we can really see these um, these ranges identified really clearly, and the head and shoulders pattern uh, pops up probably on the euro just from the um, levels I've marked out over the last three days, it uh, pops up uh, as much as any other pattern. Um, so I've given a lot of examples of that and the head and shoulders pattern as well, it, it encourages you to start um, uh, identifying ABC reversals and um, I'll show you what that is in just a second. Um, other price patterns that are really good, um, so the head and shoulders is a reversal pattern that we trade, the triangle um, pattern is more for breakouts. So trading out of consolidation, looking for that conviction bar to, uh, to enter on a breakout, which is probably my favorite trade. Um, trend lines, even on a one minute chart, these things are really valid. Um, the bigger the time frame, the more valid it is, but probably the bigger the time frame, the more false breaks you'll have on it as well, which is uh, probably one of my, or probably my second favorite pattern. And consolidation patterns, and this is basically trading in the range. Okay, so uh, the basic head and shoulders pattern is the one you can see on my screen now. And you've got your left shoulder and you've got your head. You want to be identifying a head and shoulders pattern when it's on this leg down from the head um, to the neckline for the right shoulder. So can everyone see my mouse? Okay, so you can see my mouse, perfect. So this leg from the head down to the neckline is where you want to begin um, identifying that it's a head and shoulders pattern. So what's really important about this pattern, and it doesn't, I call anything with a, um, anything that looks remotely like head and shoulders, that is called a head and shoulders. Um, just, to, just to put it in that, you know, area. But this, this, this pullback, Okay, because we, we're looking for a retracement, right? So we don't want to enter long on this move up to the head. If we're going to go long on anything, we want to wait for the pullback. So a lot of the people in the room know it as cycle one and cycle two. However, if we have a pullback that is greater than 100% um, or close to 100%, it can imply that a reversal is imminent. Okay, so 100% is the bottom red line that we can see here. That's in a 100% retracement of their previous move. So left shoulder 
comes down to what is now the neckline, okay, moves up to the head. So the, left so the neckline to the head is equal to 100% retracement. If the move from the head is 100% or you know, even around 78% um, or even greater than 100%, then that sets up a reversal. Okay, and we can't go short down here. We have to wait for it to retrace. Okay, so it's always about waiting for confirmation. So what we want to do, once we can see that it's retraced uh, close to 100%, anywhere in that ballpark is fine, we then want to be, uh, begin identifying that left shoulder as an area of, uh, as an area of resistance. Okay? And we know that that area of resistance um, you know, is going to make the right shoulder, and then we can you know, begin identifying uh, reversal traits. Okay, to, to define an entry, once it reaches this right shoulder, we can use a trend line break. Okay, we can use a, uh, a pin bar reversal, or we can look for a, a bearish conviction bar, you know, towards the neckline for our entry on the trade. But this leg from the head down to the neckline for the right shoulder is the most important, and that's the one that you always want to be looking for. So even if you don't call it a head and shoulders pattern, you just want to be looking for how deep is the retracement, and um, you know if and if retracement is ever 100% or thereabouts, then you know that it could set up a, uh, a reversal, okay, and uh, and that head and shoulders pattern could come into effect, even if you don't want to call it the head and shoulders. Um, indicator heaven is a chart that I use, and I use it uh, not because I like indicators, but more so that I can see what other uh, market participants are looking at. So everyone, or a lot of most most people, use indicators in their analysis. Um, so they'll use a combination of moving averages um, and oscillators. They're the most common type. Um, and I I actually do use Bollinger Bands a little bit, but um, yeah, Bollinger Bands are uh, another I guess indicator that I use in my chart, um, kind of to to look for areas of exhaustion to define whether the market is range bound or trending. Um, and also because they kind of look good. But I use indicators on my chart just to identify or just to see what others are seeing. And um, in doing so, I can kind of get an idea as to where our traders are entering the market. And um, you know, I don't want to necessarily do the exact same thing as them, but I can use that information to guide me as to where they would place their stops in the market. If I, don't, if I can understand where others are placing their stops, um, that can give me a pretty good indication as to where price is going to head to because price will generally take out the stops before proceeding in the original direction. So um, it's kind of contrary to, to popular um, opinion um, that, you know, enter, you know, on a moving average cross, et cetera, et cetera, uh, because we all know that when we, you know, we, we think we're doing the right thing, next thing we know we get stopped out and then the trade proceeds in the original direction. So. Um, I just want to enter, you know, in areas where uh, I think, you know, there could be stops or where price is uh, is likely to head. Not because it's what the indicator is telling me to do, but generally because it's the exact opposite. Uh, news order flow. <clears throat> so this is probably the most um, uh, the most significant indicator that I would use in my trading, apart from um, candlestick analysis and the price patterns. Um, so I use two new services. I'll just bring them up on the screen now. Okay, these are paid services that you'll have to subscribe to. Um, the first one you can see on my screen now, I believe. So this is one that I, it's called MNI, so Market News International. It's called FX Prime. And I, I think it's around, what is it, uh, 35 pounds a month, or 35 euros a month, around that area. This is one of two new services that I um, look at. And this gives me commentary on the um, yeah. This gives me commentary on you know technical levels in the market. It'll tell me uh, stop levels. Um, so if there's a you know dealer um, chat, they'll say stop levels tower to this level, and generally price will head towards that level. Um, otherwise, it'll say offers here. So that means sell orders in the market or bids here. Um, I'll try and find a few examples of um, the order flow information in a minute um, when we're looking at the charts. The other one that I would use is this one. This is, uh, this is called talking-forex.com. And this one is um, 
this one's great. You have a squawk service. So someone comes over and uh, they'll give an announcement. So anything from non-farm payrolls um, numbers to, um, again, they'll talk about you know order levels, so stops here, um, bids and offers there. Um, I was trading recently when they said, uh, I think it was Merkel. Um, Merkel said, that's the German uh, uh, Chancellor um, or Finance Minister, she said uh, or was heard saying that they would commit um, an extra, you know, I think it was like 200 billion euros to the European, European, um, European Stability Fund, the ESF. And as soon as that happened, the euro rallied 30 pips. And if I didn't have that news feed, I wouldn't have known what was going on and I would have missed out on the trade. Uh, but because I had it, I um, I didn't even look at a chart. I just bought straight away, and um, you know the easiest pips I've ever made. And so the new service, you know, more than paid for itself in that particular month, um, just off one um, announcement. But um, two things, they just keep you uh, you know up to date with any information that's going on. Um, you know, I get a lot of calls uh, throughout the day, kind of uh, not so much complaints, but just people, um, you know, they've been stopped out on a trade. Um, uh, you know, they weren't aware of an, a, new, a news announcement that's come out and, you know, this has adversely affected their position. So uh, this is another reason why I only look at one currency pair because uh, the more currencies that you, you look at, I guess the less you know about each particular currency pair and uh, I guess the less informed decisions that you're making. If you've got a longer term strategy, uh, it might be well and good just to uh, I mean, to you know, stay distance from all this news information, but um, that's because you've got stops so far away that you know this intraday um, price action isn't going to affect you. But if you're trading intraday, then it's really imperative that you have a, a really detailed understanding as to the, the fundamentals of the currencies that you're trading, and uh, you know any news that's coming out for it on that particular day, and anything that could you know uh, affect the position. So that's why I use these two uh, services. Um, and I think I kind of would uh, say that it's almost like driving, um, you know, without headlights, without having these services. You know, you kind of you don't have the confidence to stay in a trade when you should, if you don't know the underlying reason for the move on that day. And uh, generally, you know, you'll you just leave a position sooner, um, and you just enter trades with a lot less conviction. Um, so if you know that you know a news um, headline has come out about Greece, uh, which is very you know, well could do um, in the future, let's say about a default, and you see the euro falling uh, rapidly, but you don't know why, then, you know, you might take profit after 50 pips when it in fact falls, you know, several hundred. <clears throat> um, and just, uh, yeah, technicals don't have the ability to show this information. Um, the only way that you would find this information is, uh, is from, you know, actually looking at the news. Uh, market sentiment. So market sentiment is uh, it's kind of a, it's it's looking at the the news flow that's coming out and then determining uh, which way the liquidity is stacked uh, for that particular currency pair. So basically, what this means, and this is covered in the structure of the forex market webinar. Uh, but basically, if uh, as an example, the uh, you know Greece announces that, uh, or there's just uh, rhetoric about Greece you know, defaulting in the headlines. Um, if that was the case, you'd expect there to be less buyers than there are sellers in the market. So basically what that means is there'd be a lot of sell interest in the market and that would cap any uh, upside moves in the euro. Okay, so market sentiment in this case would, you know, indicate that there's less buyers than sellers, okay, because no one wants to be on the wrong side of that trade and therefore we can expect the euro to come lower. So it's basically digesting news flow to determine which way the sentiment is for that particular currency pair. Um, so support <coughs> is um, uh, support will just define as limit buy orders. So when we when we talk about buying or like buy liquidity, it just means that we have a lot of buy limit orders in the market, and the more buy limit orders there are in the market, you know, the, the harder it is for the price to pierce through that level and fall lower, and vice versa for resistance. Okay, so that uh, that really concludes anything that I wanted to go through on PowerPoint. So I'll be going through um, some charts with you now.
Um, so on the this is the, this is the layout that I would employ um, for for scalping. On the right hand side of my screen, I would only have the uh, M1 chart, so it's the one minute chart. Okay. On the left hand side of the screen, that's where I have all of my other charts. So one eye is always on the one minute chart, and then on this chart, on the five, or oh, sorry, on the uh, right left hand side, I can um, look at any other trade opportunities. Okay. All right, um, so on the left-hand side of the page, we can see the market watch board, okay? Um, so in the market watch board, I remove all the currencies except for the euro. You can see the Aussie in there because I was watching that a little bit um, earlier. But um, yeah, I, I remove anything that I'm not using from the screen. I don't have download programs going in the background because I don't want to slow down the computer or the speed of my internet connection. I just want everything to be as smooth um, and as fast as possible. Okay, so I only have charts up of the euro dollar, and I only have the euro dollar, and in this case the Aussie in my market watch board. I remove the navigator because if I've got the navigator on the left hand side of my screen, I'll just bring it up. It means that I've got two smaller charts as opposed to two big charts. Okay, the market watch board is really really important um, for scalping. Okay, the reason for that is because the market watch board shows a timer. So right now it's 9:02, uh, 49:50. Okay, so it's about the uh, the end of the minute. Okay, so I know at the end of the minute, usually if I'm going to enter a trade, I would do so at the end of a minute. Okay, um, I'd wait until the first tick of the next bar before I actually entered. Okay, um, it's now 9:03, so it is three minutes past the hour. That means it, this is going to sound really stupid, but that means we've got a whole hour of price action before the before the hourly close, and I actually wanted to um, to get onto the live analysis before um, before the hourly close, just so you could see how price moves at the, at the end of the hour. But I've missed it. But um, we've actually got a really really good setup tonight. Um, thank God. Last time I did this presentation, it was the worst uh, worst trading night you could possibly uh, wish for. But um, yeah, so I'll just get straight into the analysis now. Um, when you first sit in front of the screen, uh, usually you would want to uh, do a top-down analysis. So that basically involves looking at the high time frames and then working your way down to the smaller time frames. Usually you wouldn't um, uh, place a trade for you know at least a good 15 minutes uh, or before a good 15 minutes of analysis. Usually if I do that, if I place a trade before that time, it usually works out you know, uh, for the worst. So uh, it's just a little rule that I adopt and probably something that everyone should employ as well, just so you can get a good understanding of the news in the market and all the technical information that you need to absorb. So the first chart I've got up, this is the Euro dollar daily chart, okay? And this is what I call indicator heaven, okay? This is uh, probably the most junk you could see on a chart. And uh, yeah, it's just, it's not a pretty sight. It's confusing and it really distracts you from what's really actually happening um, on the chart. Uh, but here we've got uh, the 200, the 100, and the 50 period um, exponential moving average. Okay, and we can see price will generally move to the moving averages uh, before continuing in the direction of the original trend, um, as it did in the middle of the stream. Okay, um, so right now all I'm seeing is a downtrend in the euro. It's pulled back to the moving averages. Um, when we go to the smaller time frames, we'll start to see that it's looking a little bit toppy. Uh, but that, but that by no means uh, means that we're only going to be looking for um, uh, short trades because we're, you know, short-term trading. Okay, but overall, you, you, your analysis would suggest that it, it's looking like it wants to head lower, um, you know, as the trend has been lately. Uh, next chart to look at. I don't have a four-hourly chart. I don't think. Here I do. Okay, uh, four-hour chart as well. I'll just make it a bit bigger. So for our chart again, I'm, I'm employing the indicator heaven chart for this one. I also have just a plain price action chart for the four hourly as well, um, just so I can see all the levels a little bit clearer. Uh, but just going on what we talked about earlier, and that was the uh, the head and shoulders pattern. Um, here you can kind of see that right now this last leg down, where my mouse is now, it's um, it's not pulled back 100%. 
um, but it's pulled back probably close to 60% of the last move. Okay, um, and again, this is a bit of a toppy pattern, but it doesn't mean that we're only looking for um, short opportunities on the euro. Uh, you know, because again, we're short-term traders. Uh, moving down to the hourly time frame now. So hourly time frames, uh, apart from the one minute, it's my favourite time frame to look at. Okay, it just gives us a lot more definition as to the recent price action on the chart. So right now, we can see what's happened um, so far today. Now, I did mention pin bars earlier. Okay, and one thing I said about pin bars is if they pierce a level, it makes them a lot more powerful. Okay, and that's what we've seen here at the start of uh, today's session. I'm going to go to the plane chart so we can see this a little bit more clearly. But um, in the immediately, we can see that we're pretty close to that 200 EMA. So you know, we we could say that is going to be an area where we might expect to find stops. Okay, and then above there, we've got the 50 and the 100 as well. Okay, now we go down to the. This is just the plain price chart for the hourly on the euro. Okay, now we can uh, begin to look for those pin bars a little bit uh, clearer. Can everyone see the chart uh, clearly? It's got a grey background, so it might not be as uh, as clear to see. Okay, perfect. It's fine. Okay, so um, here earlier we've actually got two pin bars. Um, and that's just at the what time GMT is that? That is at so 0600 and 0700 GMT. So it's just I guess as Europe's coming online, um, which is really good as well. Okay, so what I mentioned before was um, pin bars are most powerful when they take out a previous low or high. Okay, so the low on the chart in this case is here. We can either define the low by the body of the candles, um, and they usually contain the majority of price action. Otherwise, we can go by the bottom of the wick. Usually, I like to go off the um, off the body. That, that kind of, in my opinion, if, if the majority of the price action, wherever that is contained, um, holds is the most significant in my eyes. But you'd expect stops to be, you know, hiding below these lower levels. Okay. So price breaks down below the low, okay, and then it rebounds, okay. It closes, price goes back down, retests the low, okay, and then it finishes above that level again before it reverses, okay. And this is um, this is like a it's, some people call it a pin bar reversal, others call it a a fake out, uh, but it's probably one of the most effective. Um, uh, short-term trades you can possibly do um, on the euro. What I'll do now is um, I'll go down to the, the one-minute chart and I'll just show you what that looked like on the one-minute chart before we go back into um, before we go back into identifying price patterns and some of the time frames. So on the one-minute chart, so that occurred at so 0600 and 0700 GMT. That were the two hourly closes where we saw those two pin bars. Okay, and over here is the previous low that we saw on the chart. Okay, so the previous low is at 131.44. Okay, so 131.44, we can see price. Okay, at the start of Europe, it rushes down through the level. Okay, and as it rushes down through the level, you can see how far it moves in a one-minute candle. Okay, and this is kind of you know why people would say it's manipulation. Um, in a one-minute candle, we have a high at 131.50 and a low at 131.37. So that's a 13-minute move in a one-minute candle that we can say hasn't really been driven by anything um, significant. Okay, and that's just at the start of the year. So it's broken through the low, and it's um, what I was saying before is that when it pierces one of these levels, you ha usually have a, a great deal of stop losses and stop entry orders being executed. So they're sell, sell stops. And when you have um, a large amount of sell stops or stop orders in general uh, being executed at the same time, that will usually um, 
calls uh, what you know very very fast price action. So you'll see uh, on the small time frames, especially you'll see um, you know bars that are the the range in the bar is you know uh, a lot greater than the previous bars before it. So the previous bar before that 13 minute range on that on that um, one minute candle that pierced through the level, the previous bar's range was 131.50 to 131.52.7, so it's 2.7 pips, okay, which is uh, it's nothing. Okay, so it's about three pips. Um, so you can see all the all the candles, you know, early Asia, uh, mid Asia, etc. The range is really low, and then all of a sudden you've got that, you know, out of nowhere. And that's purely because, again, because the stops have been triggered, and that's caused, you know, price to go lower in a real hurry. Uh, but then what you have down here below the lows, you have all that um, that sell volume being absorbed, okay? Um, and we can see it's been bought off pretty aggressively off the lows in the space of, uh, well, that was actually, the low occurred at 631. And this is a really important point to make. So if you take one thing out of this presentation, let this be it. When you have a move on an hourly candle, okay, so on this hourly candle, if you saw this move, Okay, by halfway through the hour, the hourly the hourly bar had travelled from 131.61 to 131.26. Okay, so yeah, it's about like uh, what's that? 30, 35 pips, almost 40 pips. Okay, and that 40 pip range in that uh, hourly bar, um, given the time of day, is significantly greater than the previously previous bar's range before it. When you see price move really, really quickly at the start of the hour, my first impression is, what are the odds of it consolidating for the rest of the hour at that particular low point or high point? So that's what that's what I think about. I just think of the probability of it actually hanging down there for that long. And I say to myself, you know, chances are it's actually going to reverse somewhat, and then you know it might reverse again and finish at the low or the high. But there's no way it's actually going to consolidate at the low or the high. Um, of that candle, you know, if it did it so early on in the hour. And that's why I really look at the market watch ball a lot, and I really try to identify, well, I, I try to look at how far a bar's moved, um, given, you know, the, given the previous bar's range, and the amount of time that's passed in the hour. Okay, so on that one minute time frame, just heading back to it, at 6.30, so, you know, halfway through the hourly bar, it's already moved in excess of the bar's average range. Okay, so the odds of it staying down that low are pretty damn low, unless there was something really significant about to come out in the market about the euro, um, or just you know, just some important news item that was coming out. Okay, um, after that we can see that it got bought off the lows pretty aggressively, and seven o'clock. Okay, so it's seven o'clock, and generally you'll see the most aggressive price action I find anyway in the last. 15 uh, minutes of the hour. So when we finish this presentation tonight, just watch the uh, the last 15 minutes on the hourly bar on the euro, um, but also on the one minute time frame, so you can kind of see how much extra it moved. But um, just in the last you know five ten minutes, we can see that it retraced um, a lot of the move that it did earlier. Okay, it then finished the hour. So 0700 GMT. That's where the cursor is now. Okay, that represents the retracement high on that candle. Immediately after that, so the start of the new hour, first tick, the first minute, and then, you know, reverses, okay? And that's kind of like a bearish conviction bar, but not entirely because it doesn't cover the, the existing, um, it doesn't completely engulf the existing bar, but either way, it's not the most positive sign to see. Okay, um, thereafter we see it retrace, or sorry, we see it pull back and it retests the low. So just to clarify, can everyone uh, hear okay? Just got to mention about the volume fading. All good. Okay. Okay. So then at the start of the next hour, we can see it retest the lows again, and this would be uh, probably one of the easiest setups you'll ever get uh, with this style of trade. So it retests the lows. It doesn't make it the whole way there, um, but I'm going to guess it was about 78%. Yep, so it's about 78% of the existing move. Okay, 
and then it does a, a pin bar in the one minute. Now, pin bars are effective regardless of the time frame. Um, I mainly look at pin bars in the hourly and the one minute, and um, so far they've served me pretty good in both time frames. But it retests the lows of the early of the previous hour. The previous hour was a pin bar, so two pin bars in a row are going to be pretty powerful because it's going to show you know a real rejection from the lows. Okay, so it then pin bar there failure at that existing low point. Okay, we see it consolidate. That's a pretty good idea for me to get long. If you don't have the confidence to get long, just on that initial uh, pin bar that we see here on the chart. We've then got a white, so we can see this white bar here. This represents a bullish engulfing bar. So this, this is our conviction candle that I was talking about earlier. Um, so we've got a, a pin bar, so it's reversal. And then we've got a conviction bar telling us to go long. Okay, so that's, uh, that's as good as the entry as you'll ever get. The risk on this trade, if you took it, um, let's say you entered here, so 131.37. The low here is 131.29. So let's say you use 10 pip stop loss, your risk on the trade is 10 pips. Okay, so that's um, that's pretty low, and that's the maximum that you would ever go in this kind of trade. If you entered long, as soon as that bar closed, that pin bar, 131.34. Okay, the low again is 129, so it's basically 130. Um, so yeah, you're going to squeeze in a stop loss of sub um, seven pips, even tighter if you're you know that can. Okay, but that, that preceded um, the move that we saw on the euro um, over the next couple of hours. So if you entered in those two areas, which are pretty high probability, okay, you've got a risk of around you know, 10 pips maximum. Okay, uh, I just had a question, where do you exit? Um, yeah, good question. So two reasons why you exit a trade like this. Usually what I do is if I get 10 pips in a trade, then um, I'm out if I see a reversal candle. Um, sometimes you get a trade, um, and I usually wait for the close of the bar as well before I would exit it, okay? But usually if I see a reversal bar, I get out, even if it's within 10 pips, even if it's within like one pip of my entry, um, and this is on a one minute time frame. Otherwise, I would automatically take profit at 10 pips. Um, if I've got a lot of faith in the move and I believe in it because of the news flow that's coming out, um, I might just... Um, you know, kind of close my eyes and be prepared to take 1% loss in the trade because I'm that confident in it. Uh, but here in this case, if you move your stop, to, stop loss to break even on these trades, um, generally, you know, as we saw here, it kind of retested before it moved on higher again. So usually what I like to do is I like to take profits uh, pretty early and then begin um, identifying a, um, a re-entry on the trade, so another area for entry on the trade. Okay, um, if you did enter the trade at 10 pips on this one, which you you may have been able to do, um, probably not, but um, let's just say you got out up here uh, for the sake of it, you could have re-entered just up here, um, and I'll show you why. So here is a, uh, it's what we call like a triangle consolidation pattern. And immediate things that you would be thinking about on the one minute time frame just here are, okay, we've got a, um, we've got one pin bar, okay, price has made a new low and we're gonna make another pin bar on the next hourly candle as well. So next hourly candle finishes at, finishes all the way up here, it's all the way up here. So here at this point, we've got a breakout from this area. Can you all see that? So we've got a breakout from this consolidation just here, okay, and that's confirmed by two things. A, that that support level that we identified on the chart earlier, that hourly low that we broke through to create the pin bar. Okay, so we've got a break above it, okay, and we've got a bullish conviction bar just here, okay. So we've got two areas, two, um, you know, means of analysis. We've got the uh, the pin bar and we've got the bullish conviction bar telling us that we should be going long, okay? And we're entering long um, on the close of that candle here. So that's where my mouse is right now. Okay, so we'd be entering long there if we got out of the early trade. Okay, but the idea with this is, with scalping, you only have a right for um, minutes at a time unless you get one of these 
um, trades that we've identified just now where it's a, a pin bar reversal on, on an hourly time frame where it could be quite powerful. But usually um, in the intraday kind of um, you know chop, you know you generally want to take profits pretty quick because um, because the market's constantly you know retesting areas, moving back into the range, um, you know taking out the stops what we talked about before. Um, usually it's better just I find to take uh, you know profit off the table and not wait and uh, see what's going to happen. Okay, um, so just following this intraday move again. Um, it's broken up higher, so it's, it's a breakout, okay, in early Europe. Um, I think a lot of you are in front of the screen or maybe in front of the screen at this point. Um, so you can trade these opportunities. Usually they actually occur a little bit later, GMT, so um, anything from 700 onwards, that's when you'd expect to see it. Um, so to see the hourly low or the, the break or the false break so early on at 0600, um, you know, it's just not something that you'd see every day. <clears throat> um, other entries are uh, intraday that we can see on this move higher. Um, you don't really have one in this consolidation here, um, but the next one up, okay, where I just drew the trend line. So this represents a triangle consolidation, and we can trade a breakout out of this. Okay, um, at what point do we decide to go long uh, on the breakout? We wait until we see this bullish conviction bar just here. Okay, out of the pattern, out of the triangle consolidation pattern. Okay, out of the triangle consolidation pattern, as soon as it closes, that's when we'd be looking to enter long. And because it's a breakout uh, from the pattern, we can actually just put our stop at the low of that candle. So just let's say a fraction of a pip below the low of that candle. That'll give us a uh, pretty good entry and pretty low stop, pretty low loss on the trade. Okay, and just in that, um, in the next minute, we actually would have made 10 pips on that trade as well. Okay, so that's 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 the breakout trade um, that you would be looking for out of these consolidation patterns. And again, it's only in the one minute time frame. Um, this consolidation up here at the top, um, you would be looking to trade it out of a break. Okay, we've got a really good setup just here actually. Um, right now, we have this intraday trend line. Okay, intraday trend line goes from the low that we established earlier today. So that was at O, well this is the low from 06, so 07, 07 GMT. Okay, it was last touched in this consolidation up here that we couldn't have traded out of. Okay, and that gave us the trend line that we're now trading off. Okay, just why over the last five ten minutes we actually saw it move down to the trend line. It false broke. Okay, so false breaks on trend lines. That's what I was discussing earlier. How we look at trend lines on the smaller time frames, you know, uh, or even the larger time frames, we might not be looking to trade breaks of them. Instead, we'd be looking to trade uh, false breaks because false breaks of trend lines would generally give us. Um, Far, um, faster moves and a rebound in price action. So we have this false break on the trend line. Um, this would be our next trading opportunity. Um, we could have entered short if we wanted to. Um, we would have been stopped out. Um, what we'd be looking for for a short entry is we'd be looking for a bearish conviction bar um, as it broke that trend line. Okay. Instead, we didn't get that. We got a bullish conviction bar implying that it was actually a false break, okay? And if you had traded that, then you would have had a risk from the top of this candle, okay, which is, so now we're actually just getting a proper breakout now, which is good to see. Um, so the top of that candle there was 131.66, and the low here is 131.618. So you can probably get in a stop loss there of sub, you know, six pips. When we, um. When we first came to this screen, I actually took a buy order on. I'm not sure if any of you saw it. It was quite sneaky of me. And it was just here. And uh, I was being a bit smart. And I did it deliberately. Be oh, I, I did it because I saw this consolidation up here. And I saw the candle. This close just here. I'll just zoom in a little bit. So 
So what I did, as soon as I flipped to this screen, okay, I saw that we had to close here on the candle. Just here, this is at 0901 GMT. As soon as I saw the close, I entered long. And then we saw it move higher, and then it traded lower. It actually went in excess of 10 pips away, which is breaking the rule. Okay, uh, but I did that because I thought it was going to break out of the pattern. Okay, and I didn't put a stop loss on that trade in that case. Um, lucky for me, it traded back down to the trend line. It then false broke on the trend line. Um, and what happens when you have a false break in a trend line is you have the market going short. When the market goes short and then it rebounds, you have a real uh, whipsaw price action in the other direction. Okay, so now I've actually seen it break out of the high just here, which we established earlier. And I guess this is kind of a breakout now. Um, can you enter long? Right now, since, since we had a breakout, can we enter... Sorry, Anthony Ross, Red GBP News, 827. Um, so, when, I don't think that's coming out for a while, is it? Um, but yeah, um, when you have big moves like this and it's a breakout, um, you wouldn't be want to be entering long up at the top there um, until you had some kind of a pullback. Um, the real danger with what's happened just now is, and this is why I generally take money off the table pretty quick, is um, you don't want to be in a situation where you're actually entering long um, with the rest of the market and therefore entering um, when all the stops are going off because then it's going to be like a false break. And this is what I was referring to before with the game within a game. You know, what side of the market are you on? And uh, I guess, are you on the right side of the trade or not? So if you entered long on a break of this area, um, as I did before, and you're still holding on to the trade, right now you're really second-guessing uh, your decision uh, because, you know, you kind of fear that you're actually, um, you've been sucked into the trade entering on a break of a high or a low, and therefore the market can reverse me. And that's one of the reasons why I'm kind of inclined to actually take uh, profit off the table sooner rather than later. Um, I just wanted to go through the, the head and shoulders pattern on the on the one minute chart just so you can see how often it occurs. A head and shoulders pattern is, um, the projected target on a head and shoulders pattern is measured by the head. Okay, so you've got the top of the head, if we can all see the crosshair tool now, so the top of the head to the neckline. Okay, that's your projected target on the pattern. Okay, usually in most cases um, on the one minute chart you'll actually see it um, get close to, you know, fulfilling the pattern, uh, but not always. But either way, it can at least tell us that we don't want to be going long in this situation and that probably short setups are favorable. Here's one example. Okay, on a five minute chart that would just look like um, you know, just really choppy price action. Okay, here's another example. And this is all just during the Asian, Asian session today. And I uh, just should point out here, again, we have another pin bar as well before it proceeds in the other direction. Uh, we've got another head and shoulders pattern here. This one actually uh, did come off uh, quite well. And this is all on one minute chart. Here we've got a triangle, a uh, breakout of a triangle. Um, here we've got a small head and shoulders pattern in the middle of my screen, followed by a bigger head and shoulders pattern, which if I zoom out, okay, if I zoom out, then we can see how clear that is now. So head and shoulders pattern, so left shoulder, head and right shoulder with a mini head and shoulders pattern in the middle of that pattern also. And this is from the start of the week. Uh, but this is probably one of the most common price patterns that you'll begin to see. Okay, we can see another small one uh, just here in the middle of my screen now. And that one also would have come off. And that also is a, is a false break trade as well. 
So this is the one that I just showed you. So this is a so head and shoulders pattern in the middle of the screen now. This is a one minute chart again. Okay, so the head and shoulders pattern is typically traded out of when it breaks this neckline here. So the market's gone short here, okay, and you actually would have been able to take full profit on this trade, okay, but you would enter short there, okay, but then we can see the price action for the rest of the day is just moving higher and higher and higher, okay, we have another small mini head and shoulders pattern, okay, in this head and shoulders pattern here, we actually have a, a false break lower before we have a breakout higher again, so we're always looking for... Um, with the with the intraday trading, we're always looking for false breaks because they generally give us the uh, the biggest, most powerful breakouts. I'm um, just going further back. I think that's as many as I as I've identified. But this is this is all on the one minute time frame, so we can see how clearly identified these uh, these price patterns are when we go to the smaller time frames. Okay, right now it is. 9.32 uh, GMT, okay, we've had a, a break through the high here, um, which is what I was referring to earlier, and um, actually we just had UK data out, you were right. Um, so if I go to my screen now, this is, uh, this is that new service I was talking about earlier, so 20.30, so 8.30 at my time, um, that's why I got it mixed up. So we can see the news comes out here. If I had the squawk service um, turned on, it would have actually announced it. You would have been able to hear it. <clears throat> okay, back to the chart. So what I was um, what I was referring to earlier is we had a possible false break out of this pattern. That's where I entered long as soon as I went to the chart. Um, we saw it test the trend line, okay, before it, um, we, I guess, called it a false break. It moved on higher. It only moved higher by about oh, 15 pips, okay. It's, uh, when it breaks through the high and then it reverses back down through the high, that's when we can um, immediately begin thinking about reversal, okay. Um, when talking about the head and shoulders pattern, we're always talking about this area here, this leg from the top of the head, down to the bottom of the neckline before it forms the right shoulder. So right now it's actually pulled down close to 100% of that move, okay, and, and therefore I'm kind of really doubting the position now. In reality I would have been closed out of the position um, uh, earlier because it's broken back through, it's then come back down uh, through the entry point, um, and there's been ample uh, opportunity to exit the trade. Uh, but that's what, if you're going to, um, sit in front of the screen and trade after this presentation. Um, this immediate price pattern that we're in the middle of now is what I would be uh, is what I would be focusing on. Okay, right now it's playing with the trend line still. It's playing with the trend line still before it may break lower. I wouldn't actually enter short here. Um, even if I saw a, uh, a real bearish conviction bar, uh, because I'd wait for it to retrace and establish that right um, shoulder um, before I did so. Um, if you enter short now, it's just as likely to reverse, form that shoulder or head higher, and um, you'll end up incurring a loss on the trade. So with these trades, it's often best to wait for a, um, a real confirmation of the setup that you're looking for. Okay, just a few questions. What are the MAs on your Bollinger you showed on the earlier chart? Um, it was a 20 period um, moving average on the Bollinger Band and they were one and two standard deviation. Is that indicate? Uh, no, that's not an indicator placing the text on the patterns. I just went through earlier and typed them in. On your one minute chart, you are not using any. No, on the one minute chart, generally need indicators. Uh, the Mary Sorry, sometimes I actually do have a 20 period uh, EMA. Um, I'll just add that now. Yeah, I, I would sometimes use a 20 period uh, EMA and we can see that 
um, this uh, time frame or this period EMA does uh, provide, I guess, a pretty good, um, yeah, I guess a pretty good mean reversion point for the, yeah, for the euro. But um, I, I kind of sometimes feel it distracts from what's actually going on on the chart, and um, and therefore I don't really like to have it on there. Okay, other questions. I'm still not quite clear on the point at which we enter on head and shoulders pattern. Is it the second shoulder forms or is it as? Okay, so you've got two options with a head and shoulders pattern. You can enter at the neckline, okay, which is the traditional way to enter a trade. But, so let's use this one as an example uh, in the middle of the screen. So necklines, um, you know, you could use this trend line here or you could use that trend line there um, or you could use, you know, this trend line here, but what you'll notice is that these um, these often provide kind of delayed entries and exits on the patterns. It's good because you can wait for confirmation, but at the same time, it's bad because you know on a small time frame, it means that you're going to miss a lot of the move. So generally, what I would like to do on a head and shoulders pattern, which is what I'll do right now, is I would wait for it to move up into this area here. So I'll just put a line on the chart. Um, that's the absolute high point where the red line is now. Otherwise, I would say that I would wait for it to retrace to about this area here. So 131.713, so 131.72, okay? Um, that's where I'd be looking to enter, okay? I'd probably wait for it to move all the way up here and then fail before I entered. And a failure could be a bearish conviction um, candle just out of the consolidation, but not necessarily out of the neckline. Okay, and then a stop loss could go above the high. But the closer you get um, your entry to the neckline here, okay, so the top of the shoulder, uh, it means the the tighter your stop loss and the less risk you have on the trade. Okay, so this will be a really interesting experiment for everyone um, after the webinar to, to analyze this pattern that we're in now on the one minute time frame. Okay, we just saw that it's retraced in excess of 100% of the move, the previous move now. So it's taken out that shoulder line. Okay, it's now 45 seconds past the minute. Okay, and if it finishes here, I would actually look at entry long. Okay, I'm gonna wait for the end of the minute I would actually look at entering long there with a stop just below the low. My stop is at 131.573. Okay, so my risk on that trade is, I know it's less than 10 pips, but my entry is 131.62.4, my stop loss 131.57.3, so it's about five pips. So five pips in the trade, and I would be looking at taking profit anywhere from probably or around five pips up. So I can just double click on it again, and then just go highlight 131.31, what's that, 62. Sorry, let's say 63. Fifty seven three, so one sec. So anywhere around here, one thirty one sixty two. So that one thirty one sixty eight. Okay, and then we'll just wait and see what happens. Uh, my risk on this trade is if it's five pips, my risk on the trade is actually not one percent. Um, it's uh, it's gonna be half a percent. Okay, the balance on this account is four hundred eighty-two dollars. It's a it's a live test account that we use here at IC Markets to place live test trades. But in reality, I would when I um, when I do uh, scalping, it's we with a fixed um, fixed lot size. So I always use the same lot size until my capital increases by a certain amount. And so I always use, for example, on a ten thousand dollar account, you'd always use a standard lot 
on a hundred thousand dollar account, you'd always use a million units. Okay, just as just as an example, on a ten thousand dollar account with ten pips stop loss, that means my risk is a hundred uh, hundred dollars on the trade. Okay, and that's all I would enter until my capital increased by, oh, I got a thousand pips profit. Okay, that's that's the way that I would do it. Um, and again, that's probably um, you know in contrast to what a lot of people would preach. But that's just um, that's just one of the ways that uh, I would look to trade. Um, so that's how I would manage it. Okay, we can see this trade now. It's just playing around a little bit. And I would keep this trade open um, as long as I, um, or until I hit the target. Um, if not, if I saw this reverse all of a sudden, then I'd probably be looking to exit that trade. Uh, if I saw like a, uh, a reversal candle, like a pin bar or something similar. And I generally only want to exit trades on a close the candle. On the one minute time frame, it's really, um, really easy to get uh, cold feet on a trade. Okay, to get cold feet on a trade because, um, you know, you'll see a tick go through the market. Um, that'll be, you know, two, three pips in one go. Okay, when you see that, it's really easy to get scared. Okay, so that trade just took profit, and that was the easiest trade that you'll ever get. Um, but it's really easy to get cold feet and get shaken out of the market and close position halfway through a bar, um, and then you'll find it retraces, and um, you know you would have been fine. You still would have been in the trade. So long as I'm sticking to my one percent risk or less than, ideally less than, then I'm happy. And then another thing um, that I would encourage anyone um, to do if you're going to be uh, scalping, I look at my, um, in MT4, if you go to your account history, okay, you can, what I do, I do this for daily sessions, weekly sessions, and then over a month, and then over the account as a whole. And so what I'm always doing is I'm always looking to see um, my profit factor, my average win, and my average loss. And I do that a couple of times a session. And this basically um, stops me from uh, taking losses, as stupid as it sounds, but it means that I, um, it just means that I'm just, uh, I guess, how do I put this? I, I, I'm just not taking silly trades. Um, and I just want to keep my account statistics as good as possible. So, so yeah, so I, I'm looking at my account statistics constantly um, just to make sure that I'm behaving myself and um, ideally in a trading session, I never want to see my profit factor below one, although it can happen if you start out with a loss. Um, and I want to try and make sure that my average win is at least twice my average loss and that my win to loss ratio is at least 50-50. Um, because you do take lots of small losses with these trades, but your small losses um, you know, generally mean nothing when, you're, um, you know, when you can hold on to trades for a lot longer. So this trade that I entered into first at the start of the night um, broke one of the rules in that we didn't use a 10 pip stop loss on the trade. But we can see now if it goes into profit even briefly, I'm actually going to close out of the position. So I have the close order ticket up ready to close out. And please don't do it to me now. But we can see that level that we marked out, 131.713. That's the neckline that I identified and that I want to keep an eye on. Okay, because if it fails there, then I'd probably be looking at going short on the trade. It's now 10 seconds until the end of the minute. So this is when I'd probably expect something to happen. Okay, it's finished at the high, which is really, uh, it's a really good sign. Um, I'm actually one pip down, so I'm briefly in profit. No, I'm not. Okay, close. Okay, so I'm out of that trade. And I don't care if it goes higher because, um, you know, right now I've identified that as a, as a kind of bearish setup with the head and shoulders pattern. And therefore, I don't want to be in the trade. And I'm happy to get out at a, uh, a very marginal win. It was like it was 20 cents on the trade. Um, so just, I guess, if you're going to be trading after this, just keep an eye on that pattern. Um, watch what it does around the high here. Um, personally, I wouldn't be trading it right now because I think it's a little bit whippy unless I was looking for a, um, a short setup. 
And I think this line here, the red line, or oh, sorry, this level here on the chart, if you mark it out, 131.735, that would be your kind of line in the sand. And that would be the top of your right shoulder if you wanted to trade that pattern. Um, and if you wanted to go short on this, um, on a trade out of the neckline, it's a pretty difficult one to do because of this leg here. But I'd actually be more inclined just to take a short um, if we saw a bearish conviction bar back down below here with a stop loss above here or a stop loss below the high. So right now it's 47 minutes, sorry, 47. So we've got five seconds till the end of the minute. It's now 9.46 p.m. or 9.46 uh, GMT. Okay, so 15 minutes until the end of the hour. If we go to the hourly time frame, Alley time frame, okay, so right now in the alley time frame, this actually looks really bullish. Um, and all you want to see here is you just want to see it kind of close towards the top of that um, hourly range. Um, you don't want to see it close in the lower half. But if it closes at the top here, then, you know, I think it's going to be a decent move. And there you go. Any questions before we wrap it up for tonight? Uh, yeah, Paul, that's invalidated the head and shoulders pattern. But that's what you would be looking for. You would be looking for that deep retracement. Um, and right then, that's I guess that's me um, getting sucked into that pattern. And this happens all the time. You like always uh, make mistakes, um, and it's going to happen if you trade small time frames. It's impossible not to. Um, you get shaken out of positions, you take profits early as I did there, it was only two pips profit as opposed to, you know, what would have been now, um, you know, probably 10. Um, and the first trader took five pips profit, sorry, five pips profit instead of, you know, what could have been 25, but I honestly don't care because it just means that, um, you know, the, the exact opposite could have, uh, could have happened. I could have taken a loss in the trade and I'm just happy to take what pips out of the market when I can. And that's the, that's the most important thing with this kind of trading uh, strategy. It's more about preserving capital um, than hitting home runs. Because if you go for home runs in every single trade, you're going you know, to strike out eventually. Whereas if, you're, uh, if your primary concern is you know, preservation of capital, it just means that you'll be, uh, you'll be around a lot longer for when you do eventually get it right. And um, you, know, you, get a, you, know, you get a really big move in one of these, um, one of these trades. So on that, we're over time, but that's okay. Is there any, uh, any questions uh, before we wrap it up? Thanks for two trades in profit total, 18 pips like your one hour check. Very valuable, uh, everyone. So <laughs> did you actually take those trades, Pete? Well, if I was you, Peter, I'd actually probably hold on to that trade because um, uh, if you look on the hourly time frame, it actually looks pretty, um, it looks pretty decent. So we've got the false break below the lows, which is what we look for. Um, we've got two pin bars there. And, you know, this is basically lining up for a perfect uh, a long setup, although you would want to be in the trade already. Um, but, yeah, that actually looks like a pretty good trade. So, and you can see from the um, uh, from the session tonight, you can see that those trades aren't all that difficult. They're not the hardest things in the world to identify. But all we did then, we entered at areas where our risk was really low because we had you know stops in it or shorter than five pips. Okay, so we're keeping our risk low. We're keeping it below one percent. Um, you know, we we followed the rules from the earlier part of the session where we're looking for value candles and conviction bars, and just doing that, you can identify really. Um, you know, easy to see, uh, you know, trading setups. And, it, uh, you know, if you employ just a few of these strategies uh, or just means of analysis, um, regardless of the time frame, you know, I'm, I'm pretty confident you can pull some pips out of the market. But, you know, you're seeing here, it's just, um, it's really, really simple um, and clean uh, trade setups. So right now, for example, um, 
right now we've got a, it's now the new minute, so we've just had a pin bar at the top here, but you wouldn't want to actually go short on this setup right now. Uh, the reason for that, if you have um, pin bars, what I was talking about earlier, they only, they're really only effective, um, like that one where I took at the bottom of the neckline, um, and it was effective there because it occurred after it had broken through support and resistance. But when you have a big run up like this, you know, 20 pips in a couple of minutes, and you see a pin bar, it's uh, it's not nearly as effective. Um, and usually, it can just be price taking a breather before it continues in the original direction. Um, it's now not forming a new head. It's not forming a new head now. You actually have to wait for it to take or to retrace down to the start of the neckline. So looking for a retracement close to um, 100%. So an ECN, so Electronic Communications Network Broker, is a broker who, um, or to put it simply, a, a broker, Electronic Communications Network stands for um, a mini exchange-like environment, basically. And an ECN broker basically um, collects or aggregates bank feeds, and then you know they basically allow to trade with the banks. Okay. You're not really competing um, with their liquidity, um, and I and I discussed in more detail in the webinar structure of the forex market. But essentially, um, you're trading in a, um, uh, I guess, in a neutral environment where, uh, you know, your fate, your trade is thrown into, uh, in, into the mix with the banks, essentially. Um, and ACNs, we charge commission. We don't, um, we don't give you a wider spread. So people who trade on an ECN, they want a tighter spread with commission, and um, the benefit of that is your costs do come down through the commission, um, where your execution remains consistent um, with the spread, okay, which is the market spread given to us by the banks. Do you get a good representation of volume through the platform? Uh, yeah, you do. The volume with Forex, the volume that you'll see is only tick volume. Okay, so right-click on the chart and go to volumes. Uh, it's not really effective on the one minute, sorry. On the hourly time frame, volumes, we can see that the volume spikes um, when there's high volatility, um, you know, when there's more activity in the market. So we can see the volume has been increasing um, throughout today's session since, okay, since 500 GMT. The, uh, the volume has been increasing, um, you know, as defined by the ticks. I uh, heard, but it can be vary between brokers, but I wondered if it still applies to ECN. Yeah, um, yeah, so volume, again, it's just ticks. Um, so it's going gonna, it's gonna to be the same or thereabouts, whether it be an ECN or, um, um, or not, with the volume. Okay, so thanks everyone for attending tonight. We've gone way over time. I hope you really enjoyed it. Um, I really appreciate feedback uh, on the webinars, so I can uh, I can try and improve on them uh, in the future. Um, and yeah, just just thanks again for attending. And uh, yeah, please send that feedback through to myself. I'll send a recording out to everyone uh, probably today um, or the day after. And, uh, and again, those Vimeo recordings, I'd recommend you watch them if you want to get a bit more insight as to the, the candlesticks and the other means analysis that we've gone through tonight. And Adam, yes, we are an ECM broker. Thanks again.